good news. And so today what we're going to talk about <clears throat> is we have the greatest news in the world and the worst news, and they're both the exact same event. And so today, actually, it's very fitting that uh, Hank went through Revelation because we're going to be talking a little bit about Revelation today. And so I want to start off with, um, is anyone scared of the future or especially scared of, let's say, the next generation or what's happening in the world that they see around them? If, I would think most people would associate with some level of fear when it comes to what's happening out into the world. And so when we think about that, I think it's very fitting for us as Christians to be encouraged to the fact that the Bible records all of human history from beginning to end. Even as we read the very first pages of the book, if you open any Bible to the very first pages, it says, in the beginning, God. And so we see that in the very beginning, God creates every aspect of of the world. He's in complete control of everything from the very beginning of human existence. And because we read through the entire Bible, we see all these stories about what God has done to people, all these testimonies throughout all the centuries and millennia of people. And then we get to where we are today, where God is still at work in the city. He's still at work in people's hearts. As we just heard several testimonies of God still reaching out to the individual saying, I love you. I have a plan for your life. And just as I recorded all these testimonies of people in the past, I am the same God then as I am now. And the way that I saw and I treated those that were hurting then, I will be there for you when you are hurting and sorrowful now. And so we praise God that he is never changing regardless of what this world does. And as we think about, as we go to the very end of human history, we're faced with revelation. As I said, this records all of human history. We're just in the gap period right now. In the very end of human history, this is one of the last encounters that God has with all the people of the world. And this is in Revelation chapter 20. This is an incredible passage, but very, this is the best news and the worst news at the very at the same time. And so I will say, <clears throat> it says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sits on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. For I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the death in Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. When death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, the lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. And so we see from the very beginning of in the beginning God, he's in complete control of all the design of everything in the universe. And at the very end of all of human existence, he's still in control of everything that happens. There are no surprises to God. And if it feels like we're in a community that feels lost or is, 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 is really struggling, the greatest hope that we can have, just as, just as Hank said in our communion service, is to be comforted by the knowledge that God is still God of this universe and that nothing we do or see will ever change that. And when we have salvation that is untouchable in heaven, we cannot do anything to lose it once we have obtained this incredible forgiveness that God offers us. And so I want to pose a challenging question. Is God being in complete control of everything that happens a good thing or a bad thing? The answer is it depends on who the person is. <laughs> if you're on, in God's family, then that's the greatest news you could possibly have heard. Because no matter what happens, you're on the winning team and God is in complete control. But what are for those who are not in God's family? Who actually, the Bible says, you are either in God's family or you are his enemy. There is no in-between. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if there is this God in heaven who is incredible in control from the beginning of human history all the way to the end, if you're not in his family, this is the worst news you can possibly hear. That the wrath of God is on any individual that's not in his family. And the worst misconception that's in the world right now, the worst lie that's possibly out there as you ask people is, well, God is fair, is he not? He's going to look into my heart. He's going to see that I was a good person. 
that I tried to do the good thing. Sure, I made mistakes, but I tried to do a good thing in my life. And God clarifies this in his word very, very clearly. It explicitly states every good work that we do is nothing but a filthy rag to God. He makes it clear that there is nothing that is good in us. That all that is good is what comes from God. And that if there is anyone who is thinking that there is something good in them in their heart, that I, I try to be a good person, you can hope that God lied in his book. And then when you actually stand before him, you can say, well, God, I was actually a good person. But God is very clear that no good work that we do is actually worth anything to save us. And that if we rely on our goodness to think that we are worthy to be into God's family, when we stand before him, and just as this says, everyone will give an account for how they have lived, the only answer they will say is, I try to be a good person. And God will say, well, all of your good works were as filthy rags. You are my enemy. I do not know you. However, to those that know the truth about God's word and have accepted and believed that God says, even though you were my enemy, Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrates his love for us that while you were still yet a sinner, Christ died for you. That God says, I am in control of all of human history. And every sin that you do is held against you in your life. But God provides a way for anyone and everyone to enter into his family. And he offers this adoption, as we've heard today through some of the testimonies, this adoption that is so free and so incredible and permanent to anyone who would come. And God simply says, all you must do is acknowledge that you're a sinner. We know in the Bible it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God says to anyone who is a sinner who recognizes that they're a sinner, if you've never confessed your sins, right now you stand guilty before a holy God. And everyone will have to stand and give an account. But God says, so incredibly, he sent his son. He loved us so much. That even though we were, we were not holy and worth it, he sent his son Jesus to die for us so that we could receive the gift of life from him. And all we have to do to be adopted into God's family is if we confess that we are a sinner and we ask God for forgiveness of our sins. We believe that Jesus, God's son, came down and was crucified for our sins. He paid our penalty and then was raised again on the third day. And then we can ask God into our heart and into our life saying, I want to be into your family, God. And God, like so many of the stories in the Bible, so many of the parables and the stories, he runs with open arms saying, I forgive you for everything you've ever done. And you are permanently into my family as I adopt you. And you can have no fear of the future because I am the writer of history. And no matter what you see, no matter how discouraged you get in this world, no matter how hard it is, I am in control. And so we want to bring these, these, this, this good news to you guys. As I said, it's the greatest news in the world and the worst news at the very same time. And it all depends on how you answer that question, if you are an enemy of God or if you're in his family. And so what I want to do is we are, we are closing in our, in our time here today. I want to challenge everyone. If you do not know that you are in God's family, if you are not positive, that you, have, that you believe in Jesus, your good works will do nothing for you. And God says when you get on that day, this has been on every single, there's so many Bibles printed in the world. There's more Bibles than any other book in the world. This is the most incredible book you've ever seen. It's translated in more languages than any other book known to man. It was the first thing printed off the printing press. God says you have no excuse. The knowledge is right there in front of everyone. So I challenge anyone here today, if you need to have a conversation when it comes to um, recognize that you need to be in God's family, I encourage you to approach myself or any of the church members. We would love to have a conversation. If you have any questions, we'd love to approach that with you. But right now, let's, uh, uh, let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much that you are in control. Lord, as terrifying as it is, that we are completely submissive to you whether we know it or not. Father, you are so good. 
We are so blessed that you are the God of the universe. Mm -hmm. You could so easily be a tyrant. Mm -hmm. You could so easily not offer your love. And yet you choose to love us so much that you sent your son to die for us. Mm -hmm. Father, I'm asking that if there's anyone in this room mm -hmm. that does not know you, that does not know that, they, uh, that they're in your family, Lord, I pray that you would spare them from the day when you say to them, I do not know you when they go to heaven. And you will eventually have to send them into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Father, if there's anyone here, I'm praying that you press on their hearts for conviction. That they have to respond to this. That just knowledge that they have to make a decision is not enough. That they have to profess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. And that he died for them and rose again. And then you will welcome them with open arms. Lord, it is not difficult to accept your love. You did all the hard part for us by sending your son to be cr terribly uh, killed and crucified. Father, we love you so much and we thank you. I pray for anyone's conviction in this room. Would you, would you give them the boldness to speak to myself or any of the other leaders in the room to answer any questions, Lord, to let people know that they can be in God's family today. We thank you, Father, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.